This conference will now be recorded. We do not have a quorum yet. Oh, we don't. No, we don't. Katrina, yes, we do. We have Jim Markison, we have Brenda, we have Paul, and we have Stuart. My bad. Bernard, Bernard, Candy, I'm Bernard's here. here. Candy's here as well. Bernard's here. Thank you. I'm just not on. I'm not on video. Okay. As a reminder, Stuart, we will need to do roll call this time around. And Mayor, you know better than I do. Probably is this uh, video only because of the governor's order? Is it only this one, or is it next month as well, sir? You know. Uh, well, at, at present, the governor's order expires uh, the end of this month. And okay. so starting September the 1st, uh, people can call in video, but at a minimum, they'll be in person with a minimum of the uh, the chair and a quorum. So you have to have a quorum. And I guess in this case, uh, one of the quorum members would be the chair then everybody else can call in. Okay, that's that's what I thought, sir, but thank you for clarifying, because I thought it was, you know, we had a couple of incidents at City Hall, so out of abundance of caution, the mayor had everybody go remote um, this meeting, and again, the protocol he just described we'll use next month. Thank you. All right, then, as a matter then, let's go ahead and do a roll call then. I'm Stuart, I'm here. Bernard, I've heard you. You here? I'm here. Okay, uh, Candy. I'm here. All right, uh, Brenda. I'm here. Okay, Jim. I'm here. Craig. Present. All right, Paul. Yeah, I'm here. All right, well, that will make uh, item number three pretty easy. There are no board members to excuse. Item number four is out of the community interest and under 4.1 we have an address from mayor Colson. well thank you ladies and gentlemen uh i've been wanting to do this for a while just uh and now is the opportunity i just wanted to meet you all i was hoping it would get to be in person but uh, i appreciate it uh putting me on the agenda and uh, i just wanted to say hello uh, and tell you what a uh, great service the economic development committee type a is to Haslett. you know i recall uh it was in uh, my first term which is the 99 2001 term is we first established type b that was the first one that we established and uh i guess reason being it had more of a community-wide application and uh, we were in big need at that time for any help we could get. Uh, then we, we saw how that worked and, and then adopted the uh, EDC type B or type A. And I'll, I will say that uh, now even in recent years, you have been uh, just a, I'll say a blessing, you know, to, to help spur a lot of activity uh, anything from ever, from uh, assisting with our water sewer to help uh, level the uh, pressure planes in the city, uh, your investments in the infrastructure, and uh, taking the load off our uh, general fund. Uh, I do know that you're probably not quite happy about that quarter cent uh, tax reduction to go to streets, but. Uh, 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 evidently, the, the council saw that that was needed, and we do have a lot of street needs. Uh, but again, uh, I one that uh, talking with Thad, a uh, an investment that you made was the uh, composite one of uh, plastic logistics, and um, in the by in the way of job incentives and. Uh, Dad was telling me how that move that you made just really kind of kicked off things. But uh, I do want to express my gratitude and I realize how important EDC is to Hassel, Texas. You know, if you have any questions of me, I'll 
be happy to answer them, but uh, really I just want to say hello and acknowledge this body right here. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I, I, can, I think I can speak to the board. I appreciate uh, your input and uh, th I know that you and I haven't had a chance to meet. I, I look forward to that in the future. Very good. Well, that concludes my remarks, ladies and gentlemen. All right, item number 4.2 under items of community interest. Uh, the Carter Blood Drive is scheduled for Friday, August 27th at the Haslett Public Library parking lot. And is there any other items of community interest that uh, we need to get? It's usually a good Katrina question. I don't have anything else. Katrina, do you have anything that you know of? Um, the only thing is we will be closed for Monday, Labor Day. That is important. I have a comment that I would like to make on community interest, uh, if you would entertain it. Sure. Is, uh, I don't know if you, you probably have noticed, and we put out a news flash, we had to close the uh, library. Uh, there was an exposure. Uh, Tarrant County has performed their tracing and reported back. And fortunately, it was a very isolated incident. And, uh, but uh, out of, we will uh, be posting a, a reopening date today, both on the website uh, and in, in a news flash and on the marquee of the library. So that'll, reopening uh, will be in very early September, the first week of September. So you're the first to know that. Okay. Item number five, is Justin consider an act to approve the minutes from the June 28th, 2021 meeting? Can I have a motion to uh, accept these? I'll make that motion. Okay. And that's Jim. Well, that was that was Bernard. Okay, second. This is Jim. I'll second. Okay. Then, uh, then I tell you what. Let's do this the same way we did on our call. So then, I'm Stuart. I vote yes. Candy. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Jim. Yes. Fred. Yes, sir. And Paul. Oh, I vote yes. I didn't know we could vote. So, yes. Okay, perfect. Then uh, motion carries. Item number six discuss, consider, and act regarding the financial statements of July 2021. If you'll look on page nine of your package, you'll see that we are at almost 176% of the projected budget for the year. Um, again, the construction has kept the sales taxes uh, very healthy uh, through the pandemic and over the last two years, uh, as a matter of fact. So again, your, your resources continue to grow. Um, we did have some expenditures related to the rights of way in the last month. Um, I think the total was 29,776, uh, but I will answer any questions you may have. Again, we are financially quite healthy. I'll know I don't spend it unless I need to on the project or on something that we've approved. So other expenditures have remained very low. I'll answer any questions. Yeah, Pat, and there's no way from the state to, to really bifurcate how much of that growth is from the construction versus consumption. No, sir, that's, uh, it is, it is possible to some degree uh, to get the sales tax detail report, but only the mayor and city administrator are technically supposed to have access to that because it can, it, it's a little too detailed and you can basically tell how much business your competitor is doing when it breaks it down that way. So um, I do not have uh, the, the ability to break that down, but we can continue to request it. Uh, just of note, 
Uh, we have, of course, seen some sales tax increase because of COVID, because everybody was staying home and the sales taxes were received here in Haslett for all those deliveries at home instead of going down to Alliance. Uh, but we have not added uh, retail establishments that would have uh, led to this increase. So again, um, the, the deduction is that a great deal of this increase is still related to the construction activity. Um, just through uh, knowledge of how the processes work. No, I, I agree. And I, I know that we hadn't added retailers, but we have added rooftops. So one would think we'd have more consumption in our existing retailers to some degree. Any that other is questions regarding financial stats? Well, well, on that same topic there, would it be easy to just do like a percentage breakout that, uh, you know, 70% is construction, 30% sales, something like that? May Again, I add a, a comment that might help? Mayor, please. Uh, you look at our uh, most recent budget that was just passed. I believe uh, we account for maybe uh, for sales tax. We're looking at now you want to know be, with regard to sales tax, you're asking is if it consumption or related to construction. Uh, I might be able to get you a percentage breakout of that and um, make sure I can share that information, but uh, that is uh, that's something I'll look into for you. I think okay. again, the mayor can get that report and I don't, we may want a legal opinion mayor, but as long as you're not providing the detail and we're just looking at the percentages, um, it is possible we can break that report down. It's gonna, it'll take a little while because it's a huge report, but I think that can be. Uh, yeah, created. that's that. It would be. I would just report it as to you as uh, you know. This is due to consumption, gasoline, bread, etc., uh, restaurant sales. It's uh, so that would be the consumption side, and then everything else would be with regard to construction related. Uh, revenue. Okay. Then uh, do I have a can I have a motion then or if there's no other questions regarding the financial statements for July 2021, can I have a motion in a second so we can vote on it or, or if there's other questions? This is Jim, I'll make a motion to approve it as presented. I'll make a motion. I'll make a second that we accept the minutes as, as or the financials as presented. Uh, Bernard? Yes. Candy? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Craig? Yes, sir. Paul? <clears throat> yes. Next item on the agenda is number seven, update on EDC activities. Um, uh, if you look on page 15 of your packet, uh, there was a side discussion going on before the meeting um, related to basically number one and, and several of the projects. Uh, Stream has submitted their preliminary plat information. Um, what we are discovering is that uh, I don't think we were completely following our, our ordinances and the submittals, and so we've got some some concerns. So that project has been uh, kicked back as uh, the submittal was incomplete. Uh, there's questions on street improvements on the south side of that project and some others. They that project will advance, but again, as the uh, the discussion earlier in pre meeting, no no quorum um, was related to. We are ironing out these. Uh, there's not a I haven't seen any push to stop anything. It's to make sure it's done properly and does not shift costs associated with a project to other projects or certainly to the residents. So again, that one's a, a little bit delayed, but it will continue to move forward once they get their submittals cleaned up. Uh, Latera, we've worked out the <laughs> agreement for, where, yes, sir. Where, where is that? Stream is the one that is on the north side of Caraway. It will uh, it'll abut Haslett Parkway as it comes through. It's the 
if you if you extended intermodal all the way down paul and brought haslett parkway it would be the southeast corner yeah all right just that north that parcel north of pascal or paskey street and that's the question is that street um, we're looking for documentation that says that they don't have to improve that um, and so that again that delayed the process a little bit we still haven't seen that documentation where stream wouldn't have to improve that roadway um, a, you know further from where it is uh, so we can they'll get it cleaned up i'm sure uh, they'll abide by our ordinances and make sure that that is built uh, as either agreed to or per our mtp master thoroughfare plan any more questions on that one So you say documentation, I mean, the city, you're saying the city would have documented that they don't have to improve Pascay Street or? Well, there would have to be some kind of agreement, um, either a note on an approved plan, a, a developer agreement or some kind of documentation. Uh, that's not something staff can approve. So council would have had to take action somewhere for that to be uh, a valid agreement where they wouldn't have to make those improvements improvement meaning widen that street widen that street yes sir uh, dedicate right wouldn't away that have been a dedication they'd have had to dedicate right away on a flat i believe so yes sir again that doesn't run through my office paul but i those are my best recollections i don't want to lead you astray that i can add to that if you like as I can tell, the mayor and I communicate frequently. Mayor, would you please? Uh, at at uh, present uh, issue is the developer uh, had stated the uh, they had been given a variance from the city to only um, have a I believe a twenty foot wide roadway and uh, our uh, Ordinances require a greater width, and but yet the developer had stated that they were giving variance. And so uh, the search for the variance, if one exists, uh, is being done by the city as well as the developer to try to produce it. Certainly if there was a variance granted, that will be honored. Um, but that's, that's where we are right now. It's trying to clarify that one topic. <laughs> Again, some of these agreements predate I and mean, these things go back several years so again it's sometimes not a, a quick easy search and if it's on the computer of the you know, previous city engineer or previous planning director you got to go dig those out so um and, and anyway it, it and if it's there again it's still not valid if it wasn't approved by city council so again it's not a, a, as quick and easy as you might think but we will find it if it exists why is it incumbent upon the city to find it? Why can't the developer produce a, a letter or a preliminary plat or something that would show that uh, that variance was granted? We have requested that, Paul. It's one of those we're trying to be as uh, business friendly as we can and, and working as well to see if we have that. Um, but we have requested that from the developer as well. Um, I mean, that you think it would be in a file and easy for them, but. They think it should be too for us to find. Well, you would think they'd have it in their file. We agree. Uh, again, it's just a process where we, we told them we would look, and so we're looking to make sure that uh, and anything they produce, we'll have to go back and verify in our records anyway. Well, I mean, if they had a letter signed by <clears throat> or something signed by council, so I don't know, you know, I mean, some ordinance, whatever you had to pass, Gary, I mean, what the previous council would have had to have something that would grant that, that doesn't make it would have been sense. in a, uh, it would have been in a uh, city council meeting and yeah. they, it would have to uh, expressly granted that variance, it had been an agenda item. And, uh, but we, uh, the, the city are, uh, just as Thad said, we're trying to be good business partners. We're not trying to stop anything. We just want to verify what we, uh, if something has been grounded, granted. Otherwise, 
that roadway will is subject to being widened. Yeah, strange. Okay. Anything else, Paul? You good? No, I guess not. Is that something? Well, that, I mean, another it issue. But that, I'll, I'll be here that next Tuesday night. I don't know. We'll see. Um, on Laterra, we have uh, agreed to the acquisition on parcels 1925, 25 temporary construction easement, and 27. Uh, those will be going to council. We have developed a schedule to get those uh, processed in a timely manner, but also where council's not always there until midnight or later, like we were last time. Uh, Intermodal Commerce Park, I don't have an update. They're working diligently on tenant finish out. Um, I hope next month I can announce what the first big tenant is um, in their building. It's, uh, it actually is a retention project, if you will. We haven't had to put anything in on it, um, but PNZ did grant a, a site plan change where they were able to do something for a business that is already located in Haslett and will be uh, relocating across the street into one of the big buildings. So hopefully next month I'll have that name for y'all or the permission to give that name out. Uh, I-35 frontage, we continue to get constant calls over logistics and we continue to send them down the road or up the road. We then go down or up the road, but just not right here. Um, we have been discussing a project. We're trying to keep it alive. It's a, about a 30 acre commercial project. It's not necessarily retail driven, but we think it would be a good fit in that corridor. Um, the mayor has been in, uh, really integral in us keeping that uh, pro program going or that project going. Um, so again, hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days, they will either have this cobbled back together and be able to announce it, or we may uh, you know, talk about something else. And then the Westport Logistics Center, um, as with the other, uh, actually, I think this one has advanced. Um, I think the due diligence, due diligence continues on the Westport Logistics Center. I think y'all have seen that one. Uh, that one has a little more work they need to do as well. Um, we just, we were not getting everything that is required under the ordinance submitted with preliminary uh, plat applications. We are uh, addressing that. Again, we're not trying to go back on anybody uh, that has prior approvals, but we are trying to correct what we can um, that it was in process and then going forward make sure our processes follow our ordinance to the letter so again that we're not shifting costs uh, you know the discussion earlier was also about sewer that we are looking citywide at each project and how it impacts our systems whether it's transportation water sewer um, again it's one thing if a project says we can handle our own but we want to make sure that the city overall can handle those flows and processes as well <clears throat> and right away acquisition, we actually yeah. have, yes, sir. Who's the we that's looking at all of that? City staff, uh, we have a, our consulting engineer who is, a, they are actually acting city engineer, Belcheff and Associates. They're trying to get caught up. Um, they've looked in, in detail at our ordinances. And we had a big meeting and we realized again that we were not getting all the preliminary engineering and other documents that we really should have been getting all along and that was causing us some issues and concerns as we got closer to final plat and site plan so um, Belchap and Associates is uh, reviewing that as is the mayor and city staff um, to make sure we're doing what we need to be doing and we also have a planning consultant that uh, helps us address any you know he helps the process, you know, applications will go through him, and then on land use, I think he provides great input. <clears throat> Thank you. And then on Hassett Park right of way, we'll talk about that one a little bit next, but uh, council has approved uh, an agreement last meeting um, that we won't talk about in open session, but we are we're really one parcel short of having zero condemnations. Uh, just again, the right of way is being scheduled out over the next two to three council meetings. Um, we've left some flexibility in there in case a, a settlement comes in on this other one. Uh, 
but we are in good shape to complete this uh, per the management plan and the contract. So these parcels should all close uh, before the end of December. And uh, again, that will relieve the city of any more obligation on rights of way. I'll answer any questions y'all may have. Hey, Thad, this is Jim. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, the oil change uh, business that was going to be there by Sonic, is that still on track? It doesn't seem like anything's progressed there. Jim, I'll ask again, you know, when we go through this transition, I don't know that Maurice has uh, seen that one, but I will find out for you and I can send that answer out to the entire board. I'm not aware of anything happening uh, negative. I just don't know exactly where that one is. Okay. And then uh, the vines, you know, we all drive by and see those two big houses partially done out there. Have they run into some sort of uh, problem there? It's slowing their progress? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, the the planned development uh, zoning that is on that parcel, there was some confusion. I'm not sure the best term to use. I don't want to say anything that is negative. That front facing garage needs to be addressed. The vines does not allow for front facing garages as currently zoned. So they were using the uh, PD that the, that builder was on the one next to it, which is, uh, I got me, my brain is locked up. Watercress, thank you. So again, there is uh, there are questions and details that need to be worked out. Once they got under construction, uh, we realized they were not using the roof pitch that was approved. Um, and again, that they had that one front facing garage. So no financing issues or anything like that. They just need to clear up that PD because those are not staff level decisions that can be made. That has to be approved by city council. Um, so again, they, they were, I have heard that there was an, a question on whether staff could approve that. And the answer of course is no, uh, those, those documents go through, uh, planning and zoning and council for approval and not city staff for those types of changes. That, that's not a minor change. So that's that's what's going on there. Um, again, I, as far as I know, there is no financing issues or anything that's going to cause that long-term uh, delay, but they do need to come through the city processes. And of course, you know, that, that can take 30, 60 days. So are they stopping progress on any other construction until that's resolved or? Well, all of their plans um, had the roof pitch, so we cannot approve, I don't believe, uh, any of their building plans that do not comply with the PD. So uh, they submitted a whole bunch. So yes, they are technically delayed unless they either comply with the PD as approved and written or come through and request a change and get that approved. Now their site development work is still continuing. That's not all. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Well, I just, you know, get worried when you see things uh, stop like that for so long. Absolutely understand. Do you worry about the, just sitting out there forever? Uh, we don't right. have those concerns. They just need to clean up that process um, and either, again, submit plans that comply or just ask for the change and see what happens with council. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, then moving on. <clears throat> item number seven is an action item. Discuss and consider. Discuss and consider an act to reallocate $620,000 for future projects to the right of acquisition fund, right of way acquisition um, for right of way grant uh, easements as well as temporary construction easements purchases for the Haslett Parkway project. As you all know, we uh, originally, when the bill grant uh, went through, we anticipated uh, as much as $4 million worth of right-of-way acquisition as the uh, local contribution. Uh, right now, we are looking at probably just barely north of $2 million for all of it. Um, this amount equates to one-third, uh, type B, we'll see two-thirds uh, this evening, one third of all of the agreements that we believe we have in place, again, they'll have to still go to council, but if we approve the budgeting now, and I won't talk about any specific 
parcels in open session. So if you have specific questions, please hold to executive. This would just reallocate that money so that we actually have a budget line item for the remainder of these acquisitions, save uh, parcel 14. That is the only parcel we do not currently have uh, what we believe is a path to acquisition um, other than possible condemnation. We have settled one that was with the same landowner, so we believe we will close out with no uh, condemnations, but we don't know that for sure. So this amount is, again, one third of the remaining acquisition costs for the rights of way, except for parcel 14. So this is everything else uh, in the project. And again, we don't have to, the, the board does not have to take this from reserve funds. You can simply move it over from future projects. And the reason we're doing it now is we believe these will, when they get through council, uh, we believe this, this money will start going out, certainly in this budget cycle next month. So we're not, we can't just drag it over into the next budget cycle. Again, I'll, I'll answer any general questions you may have, um, but specifics I would ask that you please save to executive session. Uh, we've got two items. The mayor has something he wants to present, um, and then we have the discussion on rights of way if you have anything specific. Uh, general question is the category of future projects defined enough that if by reallocating this it creates a shortfall in another project or was that designed just to be some sort of place marker for this very type of expenditure that was a place marker for this very type of expenditure and it even said roadway at one time uh, okay. again i think our next budget cycle we've eliminated that we'll just take a, pro a project at a time and approve them individually um, without the, the large just general allocation. But um, again, it, it will not leave a shortfall anywhere else, Stuart. Okay. Any other questions before the executive session? All right, then uh, we'll close the meeting at 12.04 of the regular meeting and then uh, we'll continue the executive session. Stuart, that was an action item? Or oh, you are correct. You are correct. Okay, then do I have a motion that we go ahead and accept uh, item 8.1 as presented? Well, are we going to hear additional information in the executive session? Should we defer to after we have the executive session? Actually, you can, I think that is uh, up to the board. I, that certainly is uh, allowable. Okay, then why don't we, I suggest that we do that. In fact, when I reviewed the uh, the agenda, I thought those were a little backwards, personally, if, if that's the content of the discussion from executive session. So then, uh, let me ask this as a matter of protocol. Do I need to have an action item to delay that in the agenda, or can we just do so? We can do that without a motion. Okay, all right, well then, uh, We'll then close the meeting at 12.05, the regular meeting, and then reconvene the executive session. This one will be a little tricky. As y'all know, the uh, alternate members are not allowed in executive. So it y'all, I, I, I hate, sorry, I'm stumbling. Katrina or Steven, will y'all leave this room open or can y'all leave this room open so that the so the alternate, yeah. alternate members can stay in there? And not have to can can we talk about that, especially since the mayor's online here? That uh, this this procedure of, of dropping the alternates when we go to executive session uh, really, I don't think, adds anything to our overall process that we have. As a matter of fact, it takes it away from when we have to make decisions that an alternate needs to come back in after we've had an executive session, but have not been part of that executive executive session and they need to participate in a vote that, that comes after it. Uh, why, why is there a restriction that we have to uh, not have our alternates uh, in the executive session? Well, first off, let me, you know, what's the purpose of the alternate? An alternate is to uh, fill uh, a, a vacancy created by the regular members not being able to have a quorum. Uh, do you have a quorum among your regular members? Wait, yes, we have one now. Okay, 
Uh, so that, that's that's the primary use of the uh, alternate. Uh, or if a uh, regular member were to resign, then the alternate can be appointed to, to be as a regular member. Uh, but the uh, point of, uh, and with regard to executive session, it is only those people who uh, are needed to be uh, part of that discussion. It's a very limited amount of people. In this case, it would be you have a quorum among your regular members, so it'd be limited to those people. And, and Aaron, here's the fallacy that I see of that being one of the alternates. If they went into executive session today, that this meeting and discuss something, and, and I'm not in there, Craig's not there, we don't hear what's going on. Next month, something is presented that requires a, a, a vote and one or two of the regular members are not there, all of a sudden we're called on to participate and vote on something. We had no information about what went on. So basically have to abstain. The, uh, I mean, what I would foresee a solution to that is that uh, another executive session could be resumed to bring you up to date. Yeah, well, yeah, if you want to do that, but. Uh, <laughs> Paul, I'll add this is uh, the state law that gives cities the ability to establish CDCs and type Ds and As prescribe within itself the structure as far as the number of board members. And uh, I know that type A boards can have five or a larger number, but anything that we don't have the power within the EDC to change those. If whatever would be modified with that would have to come from the city council. And it's, it's at their discretion totally as permitted within the range of what the statute allows for a type A. The, uh, was the governing document for all our meetings, in, in, including yours, these are public meetings, is the Open Records Act, or Opens Meeting Act. It is the Opens Meeting Act, and it will describe to you, it's available online from the Attorney General's office, it will describe to you those requirements. Uh, of an open meeting and also executive sessions. Uh, sorry, it's not what you want, want to hear. I understand what you're saying, Paul. Uh, it's just, uh, it is what it is. <clears throat> Thank you. Paul, if that ever does occur again, um, just a note, and, and now that we are all on the same page, uh, I would actually make sure to put language for an additional executive session if it looked like we were going to have any kind of issue with a quorum. Putting the executive session on there doesn't require it be held. Um, if we, again, if we don't end up with a quorum issue, but putting it on there would allow if we did have an issue and alternates need to be brought up to speed that that would be available. So again, we'll make sure we note that if we get to that point uh, to make sure that, again, you can uh, Ask all the questions you have, be fully up to speed before making a decision. Any other questions before we proceed then to the executive session? All right, then uh, we'll close the uh, regular meeting then at uh, now 12 10. So then uh, I'll see everyone in the executive session then. Well, I appreciate y'all hanging in there. This one was a little longer and rougher just because of the executive session. I'm glad we didn't need a lot of those during the pandemic. That was painful. That shift from one to the other is. Um, all right, then, uh, resuming the regular meeting at 105. Hang on one second, Stuart, Stuart. Let's see. You do have a quorum, so you can you may proceed. I see Jim, I see Candy, and I see you. I've also got Craig on, but I've got caller two and guest, and I'm not sure who else I've got. You got Bernard on. Okay, okay then we're in good guess. shape. Yeah. Dad, you want to wait? We're only we're missing Brenda. It's right. up to you, Stuart. Um, 
you know, this one went a little long. We may get her back, and she may have been called away. So that'll leave it. I'll defer to you. Let's go ahead and proceed then. Then Can we'll we do, the, do it. Can we just do a roll call real quick? Okay. Craig. Jim. I'm here. I'm present. Sorry. Okay. Bernard. Present. Okay. Candy. Present. I see that we do have one guest and then Thad and I. Thank you. All right. Um, so then we'll resume the regular meeting at 107. And uh, going back to item eight, dis discuss, consider, and act to reallocate 620000 for future projects to right of way position to fund right of way, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, purchases for the Hamlet Parkway project. I'll make that motion. Uh, who's that? That was Bernard. Okay. That was Bernard. All right, I'll second that. Can I'm sorry, who was the second? Yep, Stuart. Thank you. I accept. Okay, Jim? Yes. Brenda, did you join? Well, I'm here now, but I didn't hear what it was. Okay, this is a vote to, well, based on a first and a second, to accept item number eight of the reallocation of the 620000 from the future project to the right position fund in our budget. I accept. Okay, then uh, Craig. Approved. Okay, I don't think Paul's rejoined. All right, then that motion carries. Next item on the agenda, agenda item number 10 is consider an act on any items from the executive session. Did that item number 11. I consider an act regarding the items to be placed on the next agenda. I do not have anything special. Again, y'all will start to see those uh, rights of way purchases coming through. Um, I'm guessing by next month. Uh, of course, your financials are always a month behind, so you probably won't see any until uh, the following, but those will start coming through very quickly. Okay. Next meeting will be September 22nd, which is, of course, the fourth Wednesday. All right. I will tell you this while I'm not an item for agenda, I'm going to be out of town on that meeting 100%. And so uh, that'll be handled by our, our illustrious VP, which no problem. Candy, we'll catch up with you before then to make sure you're ready to go. And again, that one, in, in that case, unless things change, Candy, you will need to be in person unless the governor's order is extended. Again, we can, we've got all protocols in place to make sure that we are as safe as possible. And then we will need to, as we get close, have um, two others in the room. So we'll, we'll work on that. We've got plenty of time. Um, just I wanted you all to be aware as those things change, we'll send out updates. Please keep you know, reading your emails. It's fine with me, I can do it. All right, yeah, it's just a, it's a scheduled vacation. All right, then uh, if nothing else, item number 12 is adjourned. Thank you everyone. Hopefully the next time will be less painful. We really, I really appreciate y'all hanging in there. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks, bye. bye everybody. Thank you.